from San Francisco. Extracting the signal from the noise, it's the Cube. Covering VMworld 2015. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now your host, Stu Miniman. Hi, and welcome back. This is theCUBE's coverage of VMworld 2015 here from Moscone North. I'm Stu Miniman with wikibon.com. Really excited for the next segment here. Uh, when we put together the director set, we want to do some panels. And of course, from Wikibon's core, we love talking to the practitioners out there. We feel there's no better way for practitioners to learn about new technology than learning from their peers. So well, we've got two end users and a channel partner here of VMware talk about the virtual SAN, or what most people call vSAN product. So, uh, you know, I'll go through through a quick introduction here, we've got Todd Huber, who's the Director of Information Technology at Masterlock Company, Kenny Wilder, who's the Director of Infrastructure with the Fulton County Schools, and Chris Scaling, who's the Regional Practice Manager for Fusion Storm. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Your first time on theCUBE. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so, so, so guys, uh, you know, I think you're, you're, the two of you at least, you're new to VMworld. Uh, the people that have watched our show, you know, we, we've done hundreds of interviews at these. Um, we really try to help extract the signal from the noise. So, you know, here at the show, you know, VMware last year, you know, hyperconvergence and vSAN and the whole Marvin Evo stuff was like the top topic we talked about. And after a year, I mean, I went to VMware and I said, you better give me some customers or everybody's going to say, like, what have you been doing the last year? So. I uh, really want to talk about your business, uh, what you're doing, why you're looking at some of these technologies, and, and Chris will uh, be your surrogate for many of the companies that, that he talks to. So before we dig into it, Todd, maybe you can give us a little bit about your organization and, and your role inside the company. Sure, uh, Director of Information Technology uh, for Masterlock. Um, we uh, have a uh, global presence, 21 offices uh, in seven different countries. Um, we run, we actually run vSAN today uh, in five, five clusters spread out through, throughout the world, uh, three node clusters. Um, and we've been using it for about probably nine months. We just implemented our last cluster uh, in July. All right, so, so, so we'll get into the vSAN stuff just for your organization. It's at 21 sites. How, how big is the IT staff? What roles do you sure. cover? Uh, IT staff uh, right now is at uh, more or less 13, uh, spread globally. Um, with a uh, home office is the, the bulk of the IT users, or uh, administrators, engineers, et cetera, is in Oak Creek, Wisconsin. Excellent. So. All right, so uh, great. Uh, Kenny, if we, if we can go to you, uh, obviously uh, school system, uh, talk a little bit about the, just the, the scope of, uh, you know, I, the IT role there and, and your responsibilities. Okay, well I'm the uh, IT infrastructure director. Um, I've been working with the school system for 21 years and we service 96,000 students and 14,000 employees. Um, we've got about 40,000 endpoints uh, of computers and 10 to 20,000 more iPads and growing. And uh, I support a couple of data centers that are running vSAN. And uh, we, uh, we have about 30 engineers that support the infrastructure, um, additional IT staff for other areas. Uh, but we have a very large task, very dynamic, uh, fast-paced, environment where we're entering into a one-to-one -one initiative where we're putting tablets in every student's hand. Oh yeah, so my, my kids are going back to school this week. I've been getting lots of emails about security settings. My daughter just got a Chromebook, so yes. you know, boy, we understand how much you know, mobility and you know, boy, there's a lot of stuff going on that you know, really beefed up. Uh, you know, gosh, you know, when I went back to school, you know, there wasn't much IT, maybe a couple of computers off on the side, but it, it's changed a whole lot. It has changed a lot in the 21 years I worked there. Yeah, I, I ha have to imagine. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, education is super important. Chris, uh, let, let's bring you into the conversation. Uh, tell us a little bit about Fusion Storm uh, and, uh, you know, your role there. So Fusion Storm is a, a national VAR. We are a, a large, large VMware partner. Uh, we're very VMware focused. Uh, I represent the Southern California region. Um, you know, we represent from the biggest customers in the world to some of the, the smaller ones and all in between. So customers come to us with all the challenges that they have and it's really our job to kind of figure out and present them with a solution that, that works and uh, VMware is one that generally fits quite nicely. All right, so when people think about, the, you know, they're, they're this, this term hyperconvergence, and it's it fairly very polarizing sometimes. We've done at Wikibon a lot of research, tried to help educate the market on it, and sometimes it's like, well, is this an evolution of what we're doing with storage? Um, is this a, a complete way of just changing my infrastructure? Um, you know, I, I guess I want to get to, you know, 
what did your, you know, what led you to start looking at uh, this type of solution? What problems were you facing? And uh, you know, before we get into to, to kind of the BSAN specifics, uh, we'll, we'll start. Uh, so what led us into the project was uh, we were heading, moving towards a uh, hub and spoke strategy for our locations. Um, and so we had servers in every location and, and that just isn't feasible with the, the amount of staff that I have to, to support that. So um, hub and spoke technolo technology, uh, we also um, needed something that was available, scalable. Um, and we had limited support at locations, so it needed to be something that could be easily managed. Okay, was there a specific use case where you were rolling out a new project, or was it just no, kind of that centralizing just those, uh, I, IT role? Yep, just those three reasons. We had some uh, legacy technology that was out, out installed at sites that needed to be replaced, so. All right. Great, so Kenny, 21 years, uh, you, you've seen, I mean, uh, the storage industry, uh, you, you know, heck, there barely was a storage industry 21 years ago, I mean, you know, yes. I, I actually, yeah, but, <laughs> so, uh, you know, what, what led up to this, this, this looking at vSAN, uh, okay. and, you know, what, what was kind of the before picture? Well, I've been a VMware customer since 2005. Okay, great. Um, version 2 or 2.5 or something yep. like that. And uh, we, uh, we have a virtualization policy that everything's got to be virtualized, and, uh, about a year ago, back last June, uh, we were faced with replacing the hardware on a, our student information system. And it was already performing kind of poorly on hardware. And uh, the vendor and the, and the department, our student information department, were kind of resistant to let me virtualize it. Uh, so I, uh, I put my reputation on the line, my 20 years of reputation on the line, and I went ahead and purchased a three-node cluster a very large cluster uh, uh, scaled on the, on the server because the SQL server in that uh, virtualization was going to be 40 CPUs and 386 gig of RAM. And I ran some tests against the current environment and I proved to them that it would run fast enough and finally convinced the vendor to let me virtualize it. And it took some of the processing, some of the things they were doing from 45 minutes down to about five minutes on their back end jobs that they were running. All right. Chris, I guess, uh, you know, for, for yourself, uh, were you guys a VMware shop that were expanding what you're doing? Is, is this, you know, complementing, replacing some of the storage stuff you're doing? How, how, how does your company uh, fit into the vSAN discussion? Yeah, I mean, a lot of our customers, what's happening is we have a lot of customers that are kind of coming out of stealth mode. They're, they're growing rapidly, and, and so a lot of them don't have storage expertise or a lot of storage expertise on site. So they, they come to us with the problem of how do we stay agile, how do we stay... Yeah, nimble and, 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 and a small staff, but, but yet we need to triple or quadruple our infrastructure to deliver this stuff. Um, uh, we don't necessarily want to hire a, a storage person, so uh, do you have anything you can offer us? And that's where Virtual Sand's coming in nicely. It scales very easily, and uh, it's really no storage expertise needed. Yeah, I, I, I guess yeah, one of the premises we've had is, you know, the operational model, the way I'm, you know, building it, consuming it, running it, it is quite different from what, what I did before. I, I mean, you know, the biggest thing we've talked about, you know, storage is, no matter what you're doing, storage is growing super fast. So, you know, obviously there's cost challenges, um, but from an operational standpoint, you know, I, I just can't, it, you know, if I manage a certain number of boxes per person, you know, th th it, it's untenable because uh, it's going to keep growing. So, um, yeah, maybe, maybe we can, you know, talk, you know, Walk us through, you talked about kind of the before picture. Um, I, I, I know you said you, you were running three nodes uh, to start. Um, walk us through, you know, who ran this project and uh, what were your experiences? Um, well, I ran the project uh, with uh, a couple engineers that we have, uh, mainly on network side and server side. Um, and so... And I'm sorry, Todd, do you, is there a storage team or...? No, it's, no. Uh, we, in the infrastructure group we run, we run we run pretty light, um, so it's just basically three of us that were yeah. doing the project from an implementation perspective. So, um, and um, you know, we just kind of did to kind of scope it and scale it for for the sizes of our offices that we have. So, all right, Kenny, let's talk about your your experiences as to you know who ran it. You know, uh, organizationally, uh, were, were, were there any changes? Uh, and, and what is the scope of the vSAN solution that you're using? Well, we, uh, we started off with a one three node back last July. We now have three uh, clusters. One of them a brand new 6.0 cluster with uh, all SSD five node that we're migrating that same student information system to. 
and uh, I've led the charge on all the projects. We have uh, uh, two VMware system engineers. I haven't gotten rid of my SANs yet. I actually still have three, uh, so I still have a SAN engineer. Um, and, but the, the benefit of the vSAN is the VMware guy can do it all. I don't need my fiber channel guy or my SAN guy. He can provision it, he can set the policies. Um, and, and so it's, it's allowing me to buy all of this hardware and manage it with the same staff instead of having to hire more. All right, so I, I guess question for both of you, Kenny, we'll, we'll start with you. Uh, when you bought the vSAN, did you just buy, you know, did, were you an ELA customer and, and you started using vSAN? Did you look at the vSAN ready nodes? Did Evo Rail fit into the discussion? What was the kind of the consumption purchase model? I'm an ELA customer now. Yeah. Uh, uh, recently um, inked the deal with VMware to, uh, to uh, purchase your services on a, a contract. Uh, when I first bought it, I was not. I just Th Their services, you'd say. Yeah, well, <laughs> VMware's are. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> So I w when I first bought vSAN last year, I was, I was not an e LA customer. I just bought it through my reseller of the servers. And um, I'm really enjoying that, that relationship because it's brought a, 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 got a dedicated TAM. Um, I've got an on-site person from VMware. Um, and it's, uh, it's been very beneficial uh, to be in that, that agreement. Okay. Yeah, Masterlock has been a longtime customer of VMware. Um, as a result of moving in and making a decision to go with vSAN, we actually ended up going on to an ELA uh, as of last October. So um, expanding our, our purchase and volume of, of software quite a bit with, with okay. VMware. So, just to understand though, both of you, it sounds like, you know, the software you got, um, but uh, the, the hardware components uh, were, were something that you know you followed kind of the hardware compatibility list. You didn't buy something that was put together uh, like the vSAN ready node or, oh, or anything no, like that. No. Right? It was all from scratch for right. us. Yeah, that's kind of the way we started as well. Yep. There, uh, at the point in last year, um, this point last year, there wasn't really, the ready nodes really weren't really available. Yeah. Um, so we ended up scoping out what would be like a series four ready node today. Okay. Uh, same exact thing. So. Yeah. So, Chris, maybe we talk about you know what, what your experience been in the field. How do you guys, you know, put together that package? Uh, do, you, do you have yeah. a hardware uh, solution that you kind of have uh, ready made? And you know, how, how many customers do you have running v, you know vSAN today? I mean, we have quite a few. I mean, there's one we we did a fairly large uh, one about a, a 70 socket uh, implementation. Uh, we basically that was one of the selling points was the fact that. We as FusionStorm took our engineering effort and we, we basically custom designed a th three different sets of nodes that addressed their problems. So from like a small, medium, and high uh, compute nodes that were not necessarily in line with what VMware has published for those. This is more directly toward what the, the customer needed specifically. So as they ordered new compute, new storage, um, they could order from a kind of a catalog that we designed for them. So uh, you know that, that really helped address their needs, the fact that they could scale at a, a very specific type of level with a fixed cost. All right, so Chris, I, I, I'm curious. Uh, you know, when you compare, you know, out, out there in the selling, uh, how's vSAN priced? Is it, uh, you know, is it something that you say it, it's cheaper than what you had before? Is it, uh, you know, something that, I, that you know most customers are saying, oh, I, I understand the ROI on it? How, how does cost play into it, the it's, equation? It's definitely a, a combination of both. I mean, first, I think. You, the, the hardware vendor you team up with, you, you know, getting commodity hardware, it's always going to be cheaper than you're, you're buying your traditional SANs. Uh, but, you know, it's also explained to the customer how different it is and how much money you're going to save on administration costs. The ROI is almost immediate because you're not having to employ someone to manage that storage, monitor that storage. Your VMware guy already does it, and there's very little to do. I mean, vCenter and VMware really handle all that complicated tasks for you. Yeah. And Kenny, it sounds like there was a specific, I mean, use case performance uh, that, that you were pushing, but you know, how'd you, you know, walk us through a little bit, selling to the organization, you know, and uh, what were the results you found uh, to, to help justify what you did? Well, uh, the, the use case is uh, the uh, application was running on 21 physical servers, and I was either going to have to buy 21 more node servers or a three node cluster. Uh, of course, the, the individual nodes cost, nodes cost more than, it, than one of those 21 servers, but it was a whole lot cheaper. The, the storage device, the SAN, was also slated to be replaced. I was going to have to buy a new SAN. Uh, I was having to make a decision of whether or not to go iSCSI or to go fiber channel. Uh, and then cons just consolidating it all down into one box, or three boxes in this case. Um, it, it was an easy sales pitch, financial-wise. I just had to make sure it worked. 
uh, and proved it uh, itself on the back end, and it and it came through and turned me into a rock star <laughs> with my organization, anyways. <laughs> That's great, Todd. Here, what was your experience? Uh, same kind of experience, actually. Uh, I kind of painted a picture of what our network you know, server infrastructure looked like before the project and what it was going to look like after the project, and it was a fairly easy sell as well. Um, and again, you know, after we implemented it, our, our the management of our infra infrastructure has, has uh, become much easier. As he said, um, you have one person who can manage the storage, the network, uh, all that in, in one three node cluster, and, and uh, it's simple. Okay, so I've been watching vSAN, I mean 1.0, a little over a year old. Uh, the vSphere 6 version, 6.0, came out earlier this year. They, they announced 6.1 uh, this morning. Uh, I think it was yesterday, actually, but uh, you know, pretty fast pace of change. Uh, I want to uh, kind of dig in and say, you know, does the vSAN kind of fit everything you need? Uh, you know, are you working with VMware on uh, you know, any enhancements that would help make a you know, uh, feature set that would make the solution better for you? Um, you know, we'll, 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 st we'll start down here. Okay, uh, actually, uh, someone asked me the same question yesterday, yeah. and I, I said, you know, my response was, was basically, it's been a fantastic solution for us. Yeah. Uh, as of you know, a year later, almost a year later after our first implementation, I guess I couldn't ask for anything more. It's uh, met all expectations. So um, I guess I really didn't have anything else that would go on a wish list for it. All right, so, so th th just to, to poke at that a little bit, Todd, you know, through, through the deployment, is there anything that, you know, once you've done it once, you said, oh, you know, lessons learned that the next time I do it, or if I was telling somebody starting the first time, that you might recommend to them? Sure, uh, one of the lessons that we learned was uh, we first put our, our first cluster into Mexico. Um, and ended up trying to do a lot of the work on site in Mexico as opposed to doing some of the work at our corporate office and then shipping. Um, so that was uh, time consuming to be able to do that on site. Um, a good lesson learned is uh, when you go in and you virtualize uh, an entire office's uh, physical servers, you know, 20 to 30 servers, and you virtualize them all on, onto one three node cluster, it tends to clean up your data center quite a bit. So that has been a, a real positive uh, bonus for us. Yeah, it re re reminds me of uh, you know the early discussions we had. I mean, can, can you think back? You know, you've been with VMware for uh, you know uh, since 2005. Where you know, like, where did all the servers go? Right? Uh, you know, <laughs> VMware helps us to consolidate that. Um, can, can, so, I guess the same question for you uh, is you know. Lessons learned, uh, and you know, how, how much of the roadmap are you looking at uh, when it comes to vSAN? Well, lessons learned for me um, is I have to be very careful on the hardware compatible the HCL. Um, I have to make sure my drivers and my firmware are updated. Uh, I do struggle sometimes with the OEM version of, say, a, a flash card, and they have their own version of the firmware and the drivers. Um, so I have quite a few lessons learned on trying to get all of that tweaked just right. Um, and as far as uh, uh, future um, uh, or enhancements, I'm always looking, VMware, every time you come out with a new version, it's, uh, it's got twice the number of CPU capabilities, more RAM capabilities. Well, vSAN does have some limitations. There's seven spindles in a cluster node limitation. Um, it's got memory limitations on the flash, which I'm looking forward to being increased. And I was just in another session I was speaking in where deduplication is beta. Uh, officially announced today, so I'm looking forward to deduplication. All right, so slightly different question for you, Chris. So, uh, I mean, last year, vSAN really had everybody talking about hyperconvergence. Mm. So, how much, uh, you know, do you find when you're out talking to, uh, you, you know, your, your clients, um, are they aware of this technology? You know, where is it along the education process? Um, and, you know, what, what are some of the kind of big questions that you need to answer? I would say, you know, Almost everyone's aware of it. Uh, you guys have a big presence. Uh, what they're coming to us is saying, can we trust it? You know, is this a solution that can be trusted? Um, you know, it sounds a little bit too good to be true. So you know, I think uh, you know, that's where we've come in and shown them our lab, shown them experiences with our customers and our partnership with you to show that it really can be trusted. Uh, and all the new features you guys are bringing out, like today announced uh, stretch clustering uh, for vSAN, will absolutely help us grow into some of our biggest customers now. I mean, so, uh, you know, it, it, it's an absolutely killer, killer app, so. 
All right. Well, great. Gentlemen, really appreciate the time. Uh, you know, uh, uh, last thing I w want to ask is, uh, at least for the two of you, it's your first time. You know, what, what's your experience been so far at VMworld? What are you excited about? What have you learned so far? Uh, what, what would you say to your peers has been, been the value of uh, you coming to the event? I would say um, the value of being here, uh, getting some exposure that you may not necessarily get while sitting in the office, obviously. Uh, it's much larger than I thought it was going to be. Um, it can be a little bit overwhelming, I guess, but uh, it's a good, good opportunity to learn uh, about VMware products, services, et cetera. So I think it's been a great experience. Yeah. Okay. Kenny? Well, to me, uh, an attestament to VMware is the number of partnerships they have. You just look at the floor of the vendors and all the products they integrate in. Um, you got to have a really good product in order for all these different vendors to want to integrate into yours. Um, and so not just vSAN, but there's some other uh, uh, volume of connections to just a regular SAN that you guys are integrating in with all of the storage resellers. And so it, it is overwhelming. There's a lot here. It's a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Uh, but that's why. It's because it's, uh, it's a great product. Yeah, a lot, lot of walking to do. And just yeah, wait, next a, year's yeah. going to be in Vegas. There'll be even more. So Chris, have you done the partner exchange uh, in the past? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so VMware partner exchange, VMworld, you know, what, yeah. what, what, what's your take on those these days? I mean, it's just like they're saying, it's overwhelming. It's absolutely overwhelming. And I think every year it just reinforces the fact that VMware is, is the leader in the space. So, you know, I think you just have to take it in chunks. And, and my recommendation is just, you know, network with people as much as possible because that is, is you know, something that you can't get anywhere else other than here. All right, well, Todd, Kenny, and Chris, uh, absolutely, there's so much to cover. We appreciate you sharing you know, a slice of uh, the discussion here at mm -hmm. VMworld, and we'll be right back with lots more content here from VMworld 2015. This is theCUBE, thanks for watching.